Hello and welcome to the 2020 Baccalaureate Service for the Cocalico High School students and community. My name is Pastor Marissa Becklin and I'm the pastor of Faith United Evangelical Lutheran Church in Denver. We have greatly appreciated working with Cocalico's students and local pastors to prepare this event. And we are grateful for this opportunity to gather in this way. Now I turn it over to our first student, Summer Haldeman, to provide the welcome. Good evening, class of 2020, friends, family, faculty, and community members. We wanna say thank you for joining us for this year's baccalaureate service to honor and send off our seniors. As we begin our service, please pray with me. Lord God, I just pray right now that you would just come and just touch everyone that's listening to this service. I pray that you just use it to honor and glorify you and to not only just do that, but to encourage the seniors going out into the world. I pray that everything that's done here is to glorify you and that you would just bless it. Amen. Please join us in worship. The lyrics are in your program. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out Working all things out Oh yes, I will listen Desperation, I 
turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is Gracious God, you give us the gift of knowledge, of self-understanding, and of patience. We give you thanks for all of the ways that you have filled our lives with your presence over the course of our time, 
in school. We pray that as we enter this new phase of our lives that you would bless us, give us new self-understanding, new patience, and new knowledge. Grant our time as we celebrate today that we might know your love for us and the power of your living hope in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. A reading from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on towards to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining for, for, toward, towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Please welcome Austin Horning, youth pastor at Groffdale Mennonite Church, to share a few remarks. Good evening, class of 2020. It's an honor and a privilege to be with you, be sharing with you in your baccalaureate service as you approach graduation. Um, for the past, you know, the majority of your life, you've been working towards this point. The, the work that you've put in, the academic achievement, is all culminating in graduation. And over the years, there have been different achievements and accomplishments that you have made, whether it be academic in your classwork and your school, schoolwork and your grades, whether it be the athletic achievement and accomplishments, the goals that you have done, going to districts or sectionals with your team or, or achieving the, the goals that you wanted. Maybe it's other extracurricular activities, but there have been achievements and accomplishments along the way. In the beginning of Philippians chapter 3, before the passage that was just read for us, Paul lists his achievements and his accomplishments that he has had in his lifetime. And as he lists these goals that he's reached, these accomplishments that he has done in his lifetime, he says, all of these I count as nothing in comparison to knowing Christ Jesus. That everything else, all these accomplishments and goals and things that he's, he's done, he sets aside. He says, this one thing I've been pursuing, this one thing has mattered more than anything else, and that's knowing Jesus. And I want to challenge you and encourage you as a graduating class, as you step into this next season of life, there will be a new set of goals, a new set of accomplishments, a new set of achievements that you will be pursuing. But I want to encourage you first and foremost to be pursuing Jesus. In the verse that was read for us, Paul says, This one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So I want to challenge you and encourage you with that, that as you step into this next season of life, have one thing as Paul did, which is pursuing the prize and the goal of Jesus Christ. Please welcome Cara DiCiano, member of Cacalico class of 2019, to share a few remarks. Hello, everyone. The theme of tonight's service is moving forward. But I feel the real question is, what direction are you going? Moving forward in the direction that you want to go may not be the direction that God wants you to go. Sometimes we think we know what's best for ourselves, but really it's God who holds that wisdom for our lives. I found in my life that in order to move forward, God was asking me to be still for a time. I would like to tell you briefly about my journey this past year that took me to a very unexpected place and led me into a season of being still and finding what God wanted for me instead of what I wanted. I grew up in a Christian home and always had a relationship with God, but something in me never had a burning desire to pursue it, or so I thought. When I went off to college in the fall, things changed dramatically. I began my education at Penn Tech, seeking a degree as an occupational therapy assistant. Three weeks before the semester ended, I received an email from the school that they were terminating my major. In addition, throughout the whole semester, I encountered experiences I never thought I would have before in my life, things they don't teach you in the classroom. It felt like life kept on knocking me down and I just couldn't get back up. By the end of the semester, I was lost. 
and my relationship with God was broken. But I knew I needed him more than ever. So I turned to God and he was there waiting for me. I started reading, listening, and worshiping him and only him. Once I stopped living for the world and started living for God, he truly transformed my life. I get so much light and wisdom reading and studying the Bible that I knew going forward my education and studies needed to incorporate his word into any path I may take. I'm happy to say that I'm transferring to Lancaster Bible College in the fall for a degree in communications and biblical studies. I'm in complete awe of how God has turned my life around and led me to a place where I could grow and learn and serve him. I'm a living testimony of his saving grace. In early December, my walk with God began. My direction in life changed. Through the hardships and sufferings I experienced that first semester were fresh in my heart. I soon learned that trials are best met by trusting God's will, not petitioning for your own will. By spending each day in his word and daily prayer and trusting his will for your life, every challenge can be met by putting God first. In these challenging times, moving forward and not knowing what the future holds is difficult. But one thing that is not difficult is moving forward with God leading the way. God knows us better than we know ourselves, so listen to him. God's direction for our life leads to a life of joy, even in trials, so walk with him. And God's will for our life is our only hope for a purposeful life, so trust him. With God leading, we find true direction. One thing I never asked myself growing up is, do I really know God or do I just know about him? I found I never took the time to get to know him, to have an intimate relationship with him. And yet, to save us, God sometimes needs to break our spirits to save our souls, as he did in my story. I challenge all you seniors to ask yourself the same question. Do you know God or do you just know about him? There are many choices you and I will have to make as we move forward from the future from into the as we move forward from the future into today. But before you step onto that college campus or enter the front door of your new job, or even if you're still unsure about what you want to do, I would encourage you to first think about the direction God wants for you. It has been said the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but I would say the journey really begins by knowing which direction you need to travel. And the only true compass for life is following God's son, Jesus. So spend time in God's word each day, spend time in prayer each day, and trust his direction for your life. As he promises in his word, trust in him with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Thank you for letting me share my story and I'll certainly be praying for each of you. Thank you and best of wishes to all the seniors. Thank you, Austin and Kara. As we embark on this new adventure in our lives, we wanted to share a few quotes that feel appropriate for this occasion. Henry David Thoreau once said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, live the life you imagined. From Kerry Washington, your life is your story and the adventure ahead of you is the journey to fulfill your own purpose and potential. There are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind, C.S. Lewis. From Senator Orrin Hatch, graduation is not the end, it's only the beginning. The truth is, unless you let go, unless you forgive yourself, unless you forgive the situation, unless you realize that the situation is over, you cannot move forward. Steve Maraboli. Please welcome Tori Weaver, a member of the class of 2020, to share a few remarks. My name is Victoria Weaver, and I'm the daughter of Scott and Dawn Weaver, and a graduating senior here at Cacalico High School. I first joined the Cacalico family as a high school freshman, and I still remember our first class assembly because I thought how exciting it was that we would get to navigate our high school journeys together as one big family. Our class is smaller than most, but we were never lacking in humor and heart. I would truly miss spending each day with you all but I know that every good thing will eventually come to an end with the hope that what lies ahead is greater. As I think about us moving forward, it reminds me of one of my favorite verses that I believe reflects our class well. Romans 5 verse 3, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. I'm not sure how many of you would describe your high school experience as suffering, but I know that our journeys involve difficult times. As a class, we have shared many laughs together. 
We stood out in the freezing cold for fire drills together. We sat in school-wide lockdowns together, and despite what our journeys have looked like, we have all made it through, and now we get to share our graduation day together also. Though every trial we come face, though every trial we face comes at a price, it is also produces a reward. Romans 5 verse 4 says, We know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character. Each one of us has a unique character, and that is what made our class of 2020 so special and dear to each one of us. Perseverance throughout our lives is what's going to develop our personal character, and most importantly, our relationship with God. Each one of our lives will tell a story. I pray that your story is one of strong courage, that your faith in God was first and your love for one another second, a godly character that comes from persevering through our trials. Lastly, we can rejoice in the fact that a strong character gives us hope, the hope that is in Christ, in Jesus Christ, the one who has risen from the dead. If there is one thing that I have taken away from my experiences with this pandemic, it is that people are resilient and they are willing to endure through trials and changes as long as they are given hope that there will be better days ahead. I can assure you, friends, that there is hope for a brighter tomorrow as we graduate. We will trade the halls of Cacalico for the wide open expanse that is the American dream. This is just the beginning of each one of our personal journeys, and I pray that yours is focused around the one who gives us hope. When others look at the example that we set, they will see a story of when we suffered, a precedent of how we persevered, a testimony of our character, and a witness to our hope. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this reminder. Our class came into this world in a time of great uncertainty and fear, when our country at large was facing a terrorist attack unlike any other. We provided a symbol of hope and new life to our families. As our class graduates during this global pandemic, we can again be representations of light and God's hope to those around us. We were born facing adversity, and we are graduating despite adversity, and we will move ahead embracing the adversity to come. I will truly miss the love and support that I have experienced from my Kikalico sports teams, coaches, teachers, and fellow classmates, and the sense of unity that comes with being a Kikalico Eagle. As this chapter of our lives comes to a close, I extend this verse to any senior who is anxious about what their future holds. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be discouraged. If you place your trust in God, he will lead and guide you on a much more exciting life than you could imagine for yourself. Not an easy journey, but one that is joyful and fulfilling and will bring glory to God the Father. It has been an honor and a blessing being a part of the Cacalico graduating class of 2020, and I am excited to see what comes next for each and every one of you. God bless. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all of the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. He then let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and impatiently waited, wondering what he was doing. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl, and he ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked, Daughter, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touch the potatoes. She did and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard-boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean? She asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the coffee beans had each faced the same advers adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting, but in boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard. 
However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which are you, he asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? In life, things happen around us, things happen to us, but the only thing that truly matters is what happens within us. It is with great honor to welcome Mr. Dave Gingrich, Cacalico High School math teacher, to share a few remarks. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. These words are from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is with great pride and humility that I stand before you as a speaker for the class of 2020's baccalaureate program. It is truly an honor to represent our faculty by offering you a few words of encouragement as you enter a new and exciting chapter of your life. I wonder the reason why I was asked to speak. Is it that you and I share some similarities? For 29 years, I've coached the great game of football, and moving forward, uh, this is no longer my path. You, on the other hand, have gone to school for the better part of 13 years, give or take a few months during this crazy time, and very soon, this may no longer be your path as well. No matter what our future is, we choose our path. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. These verses asked for us to press on, move forward toward an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. This spring, your final spring as a Calico Eagle has been forever altered. You have lost a lot. But I also hope that you have found some gain, some time for reflection of some of your fondest memories thus far, time for your family. 2020 graduates will be ever, for, ever be known as the class of the coronavirus a tight-knit group who found their way despite the cards that were dealt to them. The American author Zig Ziglar says, the past is your lesson, the present is your gift, the future is your motivation. In closing, I'd like to read a well-known prayer that has meant a lot to me over the years, especially in times of uncertainty. It is called the Serenity Prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. Class of 2020, I challenge each and every one of you to go out and create the remaining chapters of your story. If something is truly worth having, then it won't be given to you. It won't be easy. But if you truly want something, then you must find a way to it. God bless the class of 2020 as you continue uh, your own moving forward. Hashtag Eagle Pride. Thank you, Mr. Gingrich. At this time, I would like to invite all the senior class members to join us at this time for special prayers of blessing.
Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this day on behalf of the class of 2020. For many reasons, this class is so special and so unique. I know they each have struggled these last few months from losing all the rites of passage that come with being a senior, to missing out on the final precious moments of being with their friends, to senior sports seasons, and so much more. The emotional toll that this class has faced is beyond what many of us experienced as 17, 18, and 19-year-olds. And yet here they are today, recognizing that their world is just beginning and giving thanks for what is yet to come and having a sense of hope and optimism that the days ahead of them will be far greater than those behind them. As senior parents, we have struggled alongside of them. We have watched as they've cried, they've mourned, they've grieved in very real ways, and we too have felt their sense of loss. It has been hard, hard to encourage these seniors, especially as we ourselves struggle, but you have given us strength to endure. You have given us creativity to find ways to make them feel loved, honored, and special. You have given us partners such as Blue Ridge and our local police force, who too have wanted to honor our kids. And you have blessed us with a community that cares, that truly supports us as families and parents, and who too share our struggles and pain. For that, we are grateful. And in the midst of all these challenges, I've been reminded that you are still in control. You love each and every member of this class, and you have loved them from the moment they were conceived to this very moment. You have a great plan for each one of them, for your word says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Lord, I pray a blessing over this class, over every young man and every young woman, over their parents, over their families who have raised them to achieve this milestone and who celebrate with us today, over every teacher who has fed into their lives throughout this 13-year journey, and over every friend, teammate, girlfriend, boyfriend, lab partner, bus seatmate, or confident who they have met and I know they will cherish from this day forward. May your favor be upon them and a thousand generations and their family and their children. May your presence go before them and behind them and beside them, all around them and within them. You are with them. You are with them. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of each and every member of the senior class of 2020. Thank you for the wonderful moments that we have shared and for all their unique accomplishments, the strengths and ideas that they have given to our Cocalico community. Though the circumstances may not be what we had planned, we pray that this will be a time of rejoicing for our graduates. We rejoice for them and with them today. Lord, we praise you for the amazing growth that we have witnessed in their lives, for the remarkable people that they are today, and for the ways that they will continue to positively impact our world. We pray that they may trust in you, for you assure us that those who trust in you are blessed, and like a tree planted by water, with nothing to fear in times of drought, and bearing fruit, even in times of hardship. In these challenging times, please be with them. We pray that they know how deeply they are loved, both by you and by those of us who have had the pleasure to know them. We pray your blessings on them and that you will uphold them in the days to come. In your name we pray, amen. And Lord, I thank you for the 2020 graduating class at Cucalico High School. I celebrate each graduate and the growth, the maturity, and the refinement experienced throughout their time here at Cucalico. I specifically thank you, God, for sustaining them and enabling them to cross the finish line with excellence through this unusual time. Today I come asking for two specific things as this graduating class culminates one season and embarks on the next. First, God, I ask that each graduate would experience proper closure in this significant milestone in life. I recognize the challenge it can be for some to cope with an unexpected ending. 
The disappointment, unsettledness, and feeling of loss in this unexpected ending to high school are a reality for many. I pray each graduate would be able to effectively celebrate with loved ones closest to them and remember all of their incredible accomplishments. May they connect with their peers to reminisce on memories and share a few good laughs together. I pray they would experience your grace and your peace as they bring this season of life to a close. Secondly, Lord, I ask for courage. I pray the class of 2020 would be strong and courageous. May, they, may the obstacles they face in life be viewed as opportunities to grow deeper in faith and stronger in character. May they face each day with a renewed sense of persistence and grit. I believe and declare that this graduating class will be the most resilient group of students the world has ever seen. May your courage go with them and guide them. Lord, we celebrate and honor the graduating class of 2020. Father, I ask that you would bless each one and supply their every need. May you fill each one with hope, courage, and faith. Let your word be a constant lamp to their feet, illuminating the path set before them. I ask that each one would discover their created purpose and live that out to make a difference. We send them out from this place to be a blessing to the world around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, I lift up these graduates and ask that you bless them with your love and care. When school closed and so many of their senior activities were canceled, I sometimes pictured this group with heads bowed and arms encircled around themselves as a protection against the losses and loneliness that had been forced upon them. On their faces, I pictured discouragement, dismay, and defeat, and I cried for them. And then I prayed, and as I prayed, a new picture formed. I saw the class of 2020 lift their heads and open their eyes. I saw them stretch out their hands and smile, and I felt a peace that all was not lost. As I continued to pray, I envisioned them looking around and then reaching out to others in need and a look of joy filled their faces as they served others. And then I felt hope. I felt hope that the losses these seniors have faced are not in vain. Hope that the trials they have endured will increase their empathy for others and their commitment to service. Hope that the world would become a better place because of them. And so I've continued to pray for this class the class of 2020, I've prayed that they would not give in to despair and defeat, but would live generously, giving freely of their time, talents, and talk to bless others, because I understand that in this manner, they too will be blessed. As it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, the point is this, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Lord, may the class of 2020 generously sow their blessings upon others so that they can reap the many blessings you have in store for them today, tomorrow, and all the days of their lives. May they sense your caring protection and the deep love you have for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Our gracious God, I thank you for the Cocalico High School class of 2020. I thank you for the privilege of watching them grow into young men and women who are now ready to start their next adventure. I thank you for the commitment that many of them have made to follow you. Lord, as we celebrate their accomplishments and their successes today, may they also be reminded of the times they needed to fully rely on you, of the times that you worked in their lives in incredible ways, of the times when you protected them and when you went before them to open new doors and provide new opportunities. Lord, as they begin the next step of their journey, whether they plan to work, to go to school, to serve in missions or join the military, Lord, may you bless them and keep them. May you make your face shine upon them. May you be gracious to them. May you show favor to them and give them peace. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
Please join us in singing a blessing for the class of 2020. The lyrics are in your program. Thank you for joining us for this special night of worship and celebration.